Hallelujah. Oh, Father, won't you protect this broadcast, my King, my Lord, my God. Without you, Lord, we can do nothing. Protect this message, my Father. Protect the network, oh Lord, from every form of disruption, oh Lord Jehovah God, that we may be able to fellowship, we may be able to learn from the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Sorry, guys, I don't even know what happened, but anyway, um, network issues. Um, I've made some adjustments and hopefully we'll be able to go on without a problem. So I was just saying, I'm one of those people that likes to uh, find out about, you know, when someone, I find out that someone has passed, especially when they pass at a, um, prematurely, I use, I use it as a study to just sort of understand a few things about God as part of my learning as a deliver, deliverance pastor. And I always find that there's an explanation every time. So, um, uh, Komboka, Happy New Year, my dear. Happy New Year. Good to see you. Shalmeth, good to see you as well. Yes, we are back. Amen. Just believe in God that the rest will also get back on. So, I want to talk about covenants because um, I'm seeing a pattern. I'm seeing a pattern and, uh, you know, I need to put a disclaimer because I will talk about the Catholic faith. And uh, before you get all sensitive, stay with me so that I can explain something. So um, I, I've, just, I, I've, I've seen a pattern of about maybe three to four cases of uh, women who have died prematurely and on checking, they are married to people who have gone into seminaries, um, uh, taking the vow of a priest and then changing their mind along the way. I speak on this also as someone who um, went into a convent myself when I was about 11 or 12 years old. Uh, but I wanted to take the vow of celibacy, um, but you know, they give you a chance first of all to be exposed so that it's not just excitement and I was pretty young and I didn't get to the place of taking the vow. But one of the things that God did get me to do when I was getting married is to break um, the earlier plan to become a nun and I'm hoping that this will help somebody. So it's not an attack on Catholicism. I know how Catholics get all sensitive. Uh, but that's all it is. So it's just a focus on something that should be able to help those who have gone into seminaries or into uh, convents uh, planning to take a vow of celibacy uh, or have taken the vow of celibacy and then they've ended up breaking it and getting out, um, but probably take it to be nothing because I saw, I saw a post and it was... Um, the people who are talking about it were kind of laughing about it and saying we used to laugh about how we almost went into a seminary and um, then you know we we got out and we got married and here we are with our babies and everything and uh, a lady had, had actually passed away and I've seen this uh, trend uh, many times so I want us to share out of what I have uh, learned in that process and then go into talking about co co covenants just an introduction and continue again tomorrow. So it's pretty much a series. It's a bit of a long teaching. So we'll teach it in little snippets. I've been told that apparently people digest information better if you keep it to less than 15 minutes. So popcorn generation, we will try to do that. <laughs> yeah, so um, uh, one thing that the Lord has been teaching me is about uh, the power of covenants. And covenants are everything. Even when you are born again, um, it's a covenant, you know. Uh, so a covenant in simple English uh, that we understand today is a contract, okay? So when you get a contract from an employer, it's actually a covenant with an employer. So like, for example, um, my having to leave uh, Radio Africa Group, uh, you know, as their HR director for the last seven years, you know, as much as the Lord prepared me, as much as the Lord told me I'm calling you out, I remember when I received my resignation acceptance, which I really pushed for to get, you know, until my boss was asking me, what's the big deal? Why are you really insisting on getting your resignation acceptance? But I didn't want to move into January because I've done this before and I knew that I needed to leave in December. But when I got my resignation acceptance letter, something very strange happened to me and I began to just weep and weep and weep. I even needed somebody to drive me home. I'm like, what is this? What's going on? And the Lord reminded me again, the power of covenants the power of covenants and um i had to take time to break that covenant uh, in terms of to break the soul tie because covenants come also with a soul tie um the interesting thing is that i when my boss interviewed me uh he asked me about uh, how long i was gonna serve him for and i told him i'm gonna serve you for five years so really my covenant with him um was um for five years really um 
but not for uh, for longer than that. But I stayed on. Um, it's definitely uh, at year five, I had the Lord calling me out. Uh, actually, it was a year four. Uh, but I, I, I just, you know, I, I felt there was still work to be done and I didn't have the courage at that time to do it. And I think I hadn't grown as much in my faith, you know. Um, so... Again, covenants. God moves with covenants. So back to this particular issue. So if you go to a situation where, like I did, I went to a convent and um, I was ready to take um, the celibacy vow. And, you know, in a convent, in a seminary, what you do is that you actually get married, by the way, because you actually get a ring. You get a ring on your wedding finger. Uh, and uh, the vow is uh, to, 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 they say that you get married to Jesus, okay? So it's a very serious thing and you forsake all others and focus on Jesus and for a lifetime, for the rest of your life, just like in marriage, um, you know, till death do us part. But really, you know, you move from this life to forever with Jesus. So um, in a case of uh, somebody who, a man who has uh, vowed and taken that celibacy vow, and uh, for a case of a woman who has taken that celibacy vow, um, in this particular case, um, if you're going to get out, you need to realize that you're breaking a covenant. And so you need to go through a process of repentance and of asking God to release you from that covenant. Uh, you don't just take it lightly because then in such a situation, if you're not very careful, what actually ends up happening is your partner, the person you marry, actually dies because they were not supposed to get in. Because remember, again, these covenants are, are in such a case of celibacy and all that is still death do us part. Though, again, you're not done part, but you are a nun until you die. Then you, you continue in eternity as a nun. You are a brother. You are a priest until you die and then when you con when you die after that um the belief is that you then uh move into uh, being a saint you know if you are beatified i'm not sure about what the dynamics are for the rest of the part but when i remember when uh, for me i was getting prepared to get married um the lord really took me through a process of, of, of disengaging from covenants that I had made. Um, at the same time, you know, there are covenants that are made with, as, uh, with husbands, you know. For example, if you, you, you engage in sex before marriage, that is a covenant. Uh, the Bible is very clear that the two shall become one flesh. So the only, the, the, the only time that you're supposed to engage in sex, that you're allowed to engage in sex, is when you get married. So in the event that you uh, sleep with somebody before you get married, you actually get a spiritual husband. And there are a lot of people who are not married um, uh, to date or their marriages are breaking because of that connection to the person that they slept with, the first person that they slept with. So you have to break that soul tie and you have to break that covenant through prayer and through repentance and possibly through fasting, very encouraged to fast and to repent before God and then uh, ask God to release you from that particular covenant so that you can be able to uh, move on to the new covenant of, of marriage. So a lot of marriage is breaking because of earlier covenants. A lot of people dying, spouses dying, uh, because they are an intruder into a covenant that was earlier existing. And this includes in the event that you have dreams, that you're sleeping with somebody, having sex with somebody. These are called spiritual husbands. So it's very, very important to disconnect from that because the word of God, by the way, the word of God is a covenant in itself. It's a contract in itself, you know, with caveats and with, uh, it states, um, sorry, which states, let me not get into legalese because I'm really not a lawyer. But it states, you know, uh, different sides and it's, it's various covenants really. So there's the Old Testament, which is the Old Covenant, which has, um, you know, the Adamic Covenant, um, which is referenced in uh, Genesis. If you're taking notes, Genesis chapter 1, I encourage you to take notes and study so that you can marinate on the Word of God. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 30. And again, Genesis chapter 2 from verse 16 to 17, so that's in the Old Testament, which is the Old Covenant, uh, it's broken into various little covenants, and so the Adamic Covenant is referenced in those scriptures. And then um, Genesis chapter 3, verse 15 again, also references this Adamic covenant. Remember, Jesus came as the second Adam, who was never defeated, and we blessed the Lord. And in that case, we moved into the new covenant, which is the new covenant of the blood of Jesus. I will reference that later. Um, but the, the second one, the second covenant within the Old Testament, which in itself is a covenant, is the Noahic covenant. Um, and that is uh, referenced in Genesis chapter 9, verse 11. 
I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. So that is the Noahic um, covenant um, which we bless the Lord we are under and that is signified um, on the faithfulness of the Lord and normally that is remembered through the rainbow. When you see the rainbow, clap, clap, okay? Yeah, so remember that God is love, the faithfulness of God. So that's the Noahic covenant which we are under um, thankfully, uh, just to remember that the Lord will never, so anytime there are floods and everything, that's one of the things you can quote just to remind God and to speak and to declare, Lord, you, pro you, you, you proclaimed to us that we shall never flood to this point again where we shall be destroyed. Um, so you can uh, nullify things like landslides and all that using that Noe covenant. But we'll engage into each covenant and just I'll take you through an explanation of how to engage them because covenants are engaged um, and we remind the other party of the covenant who is our faithful God and then when we are standing on the promises of God based on the fact that we have walked with God then we are able to then invoke covenants okay then there's the Abrahamic covenant which I really really love and um, this the goodness with the Abrahamic covenant is that it's an unconditional covenant okay it's an unconditional covenant um, so there are different covenants. There are covenants that are conditional. There are covenants that are unconditional. So the Abrahamic covenant is one of the few unconditional covenants. Okay, uh, and it was first made with Abraham. And this is, uh, you know, remember we are children of Abraham. And uh, this is a covenant of increase and a covenant of, of 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 being a father of many nations and growth and increase. So even when you're in ministry, when you're running a ministry, then you can stand on that and say, Lord God, as a son of Abraham, I thank you because you promised increase in everything that we will do and this is unconditional increase so this is uh, from Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 to 3 in particular uh, verse 1 yes verse 1 to 3 that you can uh, refer to Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 to 3 where are the ones who post scriptures when they quote them guys you're normally so helpful with that okay and again it's mentioned again uh, that uh, God vowed to bless the entire world through Abraham's seed, okay? And circumcision is normally the outward sign of the Abrahamic covenant. And we look at Romans chapter 4, verse 11 with this regard. And uh, of course, the Lord talks about the fulfillment of this covenant. Uh, and it is seen uh, through history um, with Abraham's descendants and in the creation of the nation of Israel, okay? And the fact that Israel has been attacked so many times and um, is especially Jerusalem, and they've attempted to destroy it. But through the years, regardless of what they do, nobody has been able to destroy it. So that's the Abrahamic covenant that actually continues to work in terms of Israel. And this is the worldwide blessing that came through Jesus Christ as well, um, who was, of course, um, of the Abraham uh, line, okay? So Jesus Christ is said to be part of uh, the descendants of Abraham. So that really continues and is solidified through the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. Then there's the Palestinian covenant, uh, which again is another unconditional covenant. And um, this particular covenant is found in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 30 from verse 1 to 10, okay? So this is a Palestinian covenant, so that's the fourth covenant that we're talking about. They're not in any particular order, though I've really tried to keep them in order, but don't worry about that. So Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 1 to 10, again, this is an introduction lesson. We will engage into teaching more about that. So Deuteronomy chapter 30 from verse 1 to 10 talks about the Palestinian covenant and uh, God notes um, that his promise uh, was to scatter the Israelites if they disobeyed him, okay? And then to restore them at a later time uh, to their land if they obey him, okay? Um, then uh, this covenant has been fulfilled twice with the Babylonian uh, captivity um, and uh, of course, uh, you know, the subsequent rebuilding of the Jerusalem walls under King Cyrus the Great, which is uh, the time we're kind of living in, uh, reliving, let me say, um, as a nation of Kenya, because we, right now we are in the process of asking God to help us to rebuild. Um, and we're talking of, you know, the Lord raising up a president who's like a king, uh, Cyrus. And if he does not obey, the Lord will still raise up another. Anyway, we are not uh, held captive to human beings. Um, uh, but to the Lord as the church of Jesus Christ. So um, uh, again, when we look at uh, second destruction of uh, Jerusalem, this was in uh, the 70 AD. 
and then of course followed by the reinstatement of the Israelite nation in 1948. And uh, if you watched our broadcast for July last year, we did talk about why Kenya is so special. It would be very important to engage in that and just to revisit it. I think it was on the 23rd of July, 2017. So it's actually there. We talk about why Kenya is so special and why it's so important and why the enemy is always trying to fight Kenya and to come against it. Again, it's related to the resettlement of the Jews in 1948. And Kenya had been earmarked for the resettlement of the Jews and we had agreed as a nation of Kenya so we're not going to be called Kenya, we're going to be called Israel. And again, the Lord came into covenant with Kenya as a result of us having said, yes, we will resettle the Jews here and that's part of why Kenya is so special to God and in the agenda of God. Because the thing with covenant, if you look at even um, Abraham uh, sacrificing Isaac, um, when he raised up the dagger and he had bound up Isaac, as he kept telling Isaac, the Lord will provide for himself. As Isaac kept asking, where is the ram? Where is the ram? And he kept saying, uh, the Lord will provide for himself. And thus came uh, the name Jehovah Jireh, okay? Jehovah Jireh or Jehovah Jireh, depending on, you know, whether you went to primary or primary, okay? So um, the, the, you know, when, but then Jehovah Jireh, uh, and I will uh, probably speak about this when I speak about covenant, the, it's not the God, God our provider. The correct translation of Jehovah Jireh is the God who sees. So out of the place of seeing is where now he provides. He sees and then he provides. So then in this case, um, uh, you know, we have Abraham who, uh, sorry, um, yeah, Abraham who wants to sacrifice Isaac. And the covenant is so sealed in such a powerful way, in this case for Jehovah Jireh, the provider, because God looks up from heaven and he sees Abraham and he sees the intention of Abraham's heart. And in Abraham's heart, he had already sacrificed Isaac and given Isaac, who was everything for him. And he was just about to strike him. And God says, do not lay a finger on that child. And, you know, um, one of the things we learn in terms of theology is that if you look at, you know, uh, Sarah and Abraham, you don't really hear them being discussed at all except when Sarah has died and it says that Abraham goes and gets her body and then looks for a place to bury her and asks, give me a place to lay my dead. And um, uh, th those who study theology have said that um, uh, Sarah actually left Abraham when she learned that Abraham was going to sacrifice Isaac. So Abraham lost everything. Abraham lost everything. Because, you know, you find you're wondering why, why does Abraham not have land? Why is he asking these brothers and this family to give him a land uh, to, 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 you know, to bury his dead? Uh, and yet he was a very rich man. And when you look at it, and it was quite a bit of devastation and loss for Abraham from the place that he said he's going to sacrifice Isaac, and yet God entered into covenant with him. Yet you don't quite see it. You don't quite uh, understand understand this covenant and some covenants um, outlive us so they, they they are fulfilled beyond our time and you know I can imagine Abraham in heaven looking and seeing all his descendants and I don't believe that people in heaven see earth um, unless the Lord allows it but you know one day when we stand before him before God and I believe Abraham is in heaven and he'll be able to see that the scripture was fulfilled but the goodness is that Abraham believed it so really, I was just talking about covenant. And so the, the, the link that I'm trying to put to this is that Kenya, when we agreed to host uh, Israel and therefore be called Israel, um, you know, one of the things that, that did happen is um, it's important to note the name Kenya, 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 the name Kenya is actually uh, Jewish, two names. Um, Ken, that means nest, and then Ya which is Yahweh. So we are God's nest. And that's why Kenya is so special. And Kenya is earmarked even for um, the, 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 as a launch, launch pad for the glory of God, the end time glory of God. We are a launching pad. And by the way, uh, people who come to Kenya to launch anything, it succeeds every single time. Uh, the only thing we have failed to do is to launch Kenya within Kenya so that uh, Kenya can be able to grow. And it's my prayer that with time, as we continue with these teachings, that they'll get to the right people. Um, in government that will use that and launch Kenya within the word Kenya, you know, as a launching pad. Uh, Kenya, Kenya is the nest, God's nest, Yahweh's nest. So the next covenant, number five, again, uh, just to say we are starting a series, so we will get slowly and teach on each of these covenants. So the next covenant is uh, the Mosaic Covenant, um, which is really, really uh, believed in by the Jews. Um, and by the, you know, the Jews believe in all these covenants, um, except uh, the last covenant, which is um, 
um, the covenant, the new covenant about Jesus Christ. Because remember, they believed that Jesus did not die. Um, there was that lie that was sold when um, they realized that there was a problem. Uh, so they, there was a lie that was sold. To the, you remember they were told, I need to check where it is. Uh, but they were told um, to go back. The guards were told to go back and to tell the people that the disciples came and stole the body of Jesus Christ. And, uh, you know, I talked about this a little while ago because a lie, um, uh, a lie can really, really be uh, instilled um, because to date the Jews believe that the body of Jesus Christ was stolen. They don't believe that he rose and so they don't believe he was the Messiah just based on a bribe and being told go and tell them that the body was stolen because they were afraid of what would have happened to them. The government officials were afraid of what was going to happen to them if the people realized that they crucified the Savior. So they sold that lie and the Jews actually believed that and in the end time before Jesus returns they will finally realize that he is Yeshua HaMashiach who is the Messiah. Uh, the Jews will have that revelation uh, just before the return of Jesus Christ. So that's why we continue also. It's one of the reasons we continue to pray for the Jews and, and for Israel. And uh, of course, uh, the, the Lord promises us that we will prosper as we uh, pray for Israel. And also, of course, we will have peace as we pray for Israel. And remember, again, the Abrahamic blessing and the Abrahamic covenant is that God blesses those who bless Israel. So people try to have all sorts of controversy, who is Israel and all that stuff. Uh, but those are just lies from the enemy. Um, we, 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 we are wise when we pray for Israel. And indeed, we do right when we pray for Israel. When we pray for Israel, pray, please pray for them to have that divine revelation that Jesus did come and that that was a lie. You know, even as they're studying um, uh, the Bible, they've been studying the Bible, they've gone back to studying the Bible uh, with the, the, the Prime Minister um, in the Prime Minister's house. Let us pray that the glory of God will descend, um, even as revival falls, that they may be able to realize that the Messiah that they crucified was actually the Christ and repent that Jesus may return. Oh, Rando, Sikiri, oh Father, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I was just praying and interceding. I didn't realize it was so brief. Thank you, Jesus. You know, we can do nothing without God, okay? Um, sorry about that disruption in network. So I'm just about to finish. So the Mosaic Covenant um, is seen in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 11. Deuteronomy 11. Remember, I'm just saying that the Jews believe in all this, by the way. If a Jew is watching, they'll be like, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, and have a lot of information as well in all these, apart from the last one. That is where the dispute comes. And uh, even the, 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 the Muslims, a lot of them believe in these particular covenants as well, except the one on the rise or the, 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 the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that Jesus is the Son of God. Yeah, so... Um, Deuteronomy 11 and elsewhere, um, so God promises the Israelites uh, a blessing for obedience and a curse, uh, and a curse for disobedience. Again, this is also in Deuteronomy chapter 28, okay? And uh, much of the Old Testament chronicles, uh, it chronicles the fulfillment of this cycle of judgment for sin and later blessing when God's people repented and returned to God. So quite a bit of that, you'll see uh, quite a bit of the Mosaic uh, Covenant uh, being reflected even in our own lives um, so that when you're, you're walking with God, you walk in blessing, you walk in his release. And then when you're walking against God, um, there is a way that uh, seems right to a man, but the end of which is death. But the difference is the cross of Jesus Christ and of course the blood of Jesus uh, that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Then we have number six is uh, the Davidic covenant. This is the covenant of David, the Davidic covenant, and this is kingship. This is what we're looking at, kingship. And this again is an unconditional covenant. It's also an unconditional covenant. And it is found in uh, 2 Samuel uh, chapter 7 from verse 8 to 16. And God promises to bless the house of David and the lineage of David and and uh, again, I'm going to teach you about um, how to, um, you know, invoke that blessing in particular um, uh, to be of the line of David uh, that comes through salvation. But I'll take time just to explain further and uh, even about Sozo and how to go about this as well. Um, then uh, Jesus, of course, is from the line of David. Remember, the line of David also includes a prostitute who is Rahab. And, um, you know, 
this uh, when we were traveling uh, the other day with uh, some ministry team members, we were discussing something very interesting because we call a God the God of 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 um, so Catherine it's M O S A I C okay mosaic um, uh, like mosaic okay yeah so um, the we were discussing with. Uh, um, uh, our ministry team members, we just began to engage in a discussion on the Bible and the Word of God. And then we discussed how we say God of Jacob, and then we say God of Israel. The fact that we call God God of Jacob, God of Jacob is still covenant, and it's it's, it's a declaration of the mercy of God that Jacob was a liar, Jacob was a thief. He stole the blessings of his brother and connived with his mother and they conned the, the father out and got a blessing. And so when we call God, God of Jacob, we remember the God who is merciful even when we sin. Isn't that powerful? Isn't that powerful? He's a God of mercy when we say God of Jacob. Then uh, God, of, or God of Israel is the God who broke the hip of Jacob and came upon him with um, transformation until when he met with Ezra, Ezra was not able to recognize him as the thief and embraced him because he was no longer Jacob but was Israel and out of Israel then comes an entire nation that is formed out of a thief. I tell you the masses of God are amazing. It amazes me that God knows us, he knows everything, he sees everything and yet his mercies are new every morning and that's why we must not be so hard on ourselves. We must walk holy as God is holy. We must take him seriously. We must consider him to be God and fear the Lord and yet at the end of the day be able to, um, you know, uh, realize that should we fall, a righteous man will fall seven times, but seven times he must rise. So long as you give your life to Christ, you do need to give your life to Christ and be born again so that you're on this other side of mercy and the blood of Jesus. Because when God looks at us, he sees mercy, he sees the blood of Jesus. Again, um, on the Davidic covenant, um, you can refer to it uh, from Luke chapter 1, verse 32 to 33. Um, and this is about the lineage of Gandara Sikire Oh, it's Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus. You're so helpful. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So just brief interruption there with network. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, I was just saying how G uh, David, King David said, you shall not cause your righteous one to perish or to know uh, decay. And yet he was prophesying. He wasn't talking about himself. He was actually talking about Jesus Christ. He was prophesying as he spoke about that scripture um, that many thought of the living God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, every time we preach a powerful message, the enemy tries to disrupt it. Every time. So if intercessors could just help me to intercede uh, so that we can be able to continue and just finish. Um, so Mark chapter 10, verse 45 talks about, of course, the fulfillment of this covenant uh, to David, the promise to David. And remember, it came all the way from Rahab who assisted the spies and uh, she received a promise out of that. So it's very, very important. Um, yes, Shelmet, it's really being fought by the enemy. It's a very powerful message. Um, then finally comes the new covenant. Uh, which is spoken about in Jeremiah 31, from verse 31 to 34. The Jeremiah 31, from verse 31 to 34. And again, Matthew chapter 26, verse 28. Matthew chapter 26, verse 28. And Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. Okay? Matthew chapter 26, verse 28. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. And Jeremiah 31, verse 31 to 34. 34. Jeremiah 31, verse 31 to verse 34, talks about the new covenant. And this is about the forgiveness of sin and um, the relationship that is mended with God once and for all. The blood sacrifice that is given once and for all uh, for everyone, you know, that will give their life to Christ, that will allow Jesus to come into their life and be their Savior and their Lord. I've shared before that I was Catholic, and we were taught, and I know Catholics are learning different things these days, but in those days we were taught that everyone is saved, you know. Jesus died on the cross, everyone is saved. But the Lord gave me an explanation to salvation, and I was so shocked later on when I gave 
gave my life to Christ. To find that salvation is discussed in the Bible. You know, by the way, there's a blindness that comes that the enemy puts upon us, just like with uh, Saul converting into Paul and then scales falling off his eyes, something like scales falling off his eyes. Indeed, we, when we give our lives to Christ, there are scales that come off our eyes and we are able to see things that you cannot see because you're not in a covenant. And the covenant of the new covenant is a covenant of life, everlasting life. And so when you give your life to Christ, the things you are able to see, there are messages I will preach and an unbeliever will not understand. I will prophesy and an unbeliever will insult me and say all sorts of things. And sometimes even somebody who's backslidden and doesn't realize that they're backslidden will not understand because prophecy is for the believer. That's what the word of God is very clear about in 1 Corinthians, that prophecy is for the believer. And, uh, uh, and you know, um, tongues are for the unbeliever. And so there are things that will come through. I remember when my mom was giving her life to Christ. I asked her, mommy, will you give your life to Christ today? And she said, no. This was like the second time I was asking her in 20 years. The first time I'd done a 40-day fast. Then I told her uh, when her shop was robbed about Jesus and she had said, you know, when I come in the evening, I can't do the sinner's prayer right now in the shop. But if I come in the evening, I would like you to lead me through. And she came home and she said, I didn't say no such thing. And I was really, really hard and I really, really cried and I nearly broke that 40-day fast, but I continued to fast and pray. And 20 years later, I was reminding her, mom, you know, I did tell you about the, the, the story of salvation and I'm never going to tell you again. I will not repeat it again. I was really, really harsh with my mother and I very clearly told her if dad, you know, dad had given his life to Christ the day before and she didn't know. And the Holy Spirit told me part of the reason she didn't want to give her life to Christ is because of her commitment to my dad and the Catholic union that they had or had, okay, had, let me put it as had. Um, and I told her, you know, mom, if dad dies if you and dad die today and dad uh, dad will go straight to heaven because he gave his life to christ yesterday and you refuse to give your life to christ so i'm going to ask you one more time and i'll never ask you again would you like to give your life to christ and she asked me explain it to me again and i said mom it's just simple you realize that jesus came and died on the cross for our sin and you just say the sinner's prayer and it's a sin repentance prayer and you ask Jesus to come into your heart. It's really simple. So she said, okay. And my mom gave her life to Christ with her mind. So because I explained to her, so she did an intellectual thing. It wasn't a feeling. And it's very interesting because the moment the mom gave her life, she said the sinner's prayer. She fell on her knees instantly and began to weep before God. And she began to confess and say, I'm a sinner. Her eyes were opened and it really revealed to me the power of covenant. And at that moment, it's like scales fell off her eyes and she was able to see. And it's very similar to what happened to me when I gave my life to Christ 26 years ago. Ooh, it's 26 years ago this year. 26 years ago in August. And um, I, I heard I was crying on the bed. I had just, you know, I used to have a really horrible temper. My sister and I had had this fight. We used to really fight like cats and dogs. And I just fought with her and I was fed up. I was tired. I was scared. I can't do this anymore. You know, I've been praying about this and it doesn't change. And I was lying on my bed and wailing to God and saying, where are you? Why don't you change me? Why don't you transform me? Why, why is it that, you know, I, I call to you and this keeps happening? Why, why would you change me? And I had a voice which later I learned was a voice of an angel. The Lord released an angel to me. And the angel said to me in a very clear, audible voice, which I heard externally. And he said, you're such a sinner. And instead of repenting, you're blaming God. Why don't you kneel down and pray? I've never forgotten those words. And I knelt down. And as I knelt down, you know the thing with covenant is, the moment you obey, just like with Abraham, when he decided in his heart he was killing this little boy, Isaac, who was his only child, who he might Master, he believed what God was going to raise anyway because God is not a, a covenant breaker. You know, the power of covenant and understanding covenant is that you cannot be moved because you understand that God is bound by covenant. And so for you, and you're able to keep the covenant knowing who you have believed. The covenant keeper, the way maker, the miracle worker. He is faithful. God is bound by covenant. And I will read for you very shortly after I finish explaining about my salvation experience for the umpteenth time for those who follow uh, you know, my page um, relentlessly, you will hear it for the umpteenth time. But I'm explaining covenant and how sometimes you will own 
only be able to see and the, the veil will only fall off your eyes and the scales will only fall off your eyes when you do say the sinner's prayer. Sometimes don't wait for your day. You know the story of my day has not come. Which day is this that was promised to you? What if you're hit by a bus? You're going to go straight to hell. What if, um, you know, you catch some disease and you go into ICU? You will not get a chance. The Bible says very clearly today is the day of your salvation. You don't know if you, you get a second opportunity. The Bible tells us in Hebrews that when you hear the word of God, you must not harden your heart, but you must honor the Lord and just obey the Lord. And it's really by saying the sinner's prayer. And so for me, as I knelt down to say the sinner's pr the prayer, read the Lord. Oh, Lord, send me help from Zion. Yes, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for that help from Zion. Hallelujah. You know, my prayer is also that as I pray, you will learn also how to pray and what to speak to the Lord. Sometimes you just say, God, send me help from Zion. And it's part of the covenant that you will be sent help from Zion. And the Lord instantly um, clears the network. It's part of covenant, by the way. You know, as I preach, I've not sent myself. So I ask for help. And God gives help because he has promised to send help. So as I knelt down to pray, uh, two things happened. Uh, one is that the fact that I obeyed, even before I said the prayer, the covenant was instantly, the new covenant was instantly, uh, you know, brought out or brought forward and spoken to my life at that very moment. At that very moment, the Holy Spirit becomes my helper, or became my helper. And I said the sinner's prayer, which I was very shocked when I went into, um, you know, a, another church. And uh, I heard I'd never gone to a Protestant church. I used to say I was born a Catholic, I'll die a Catholic. And I was so sure that the Catholic faith was the right faith and there was nothing else. And anything outside of that was a Thank you, Father. Send me help. Thank you, Lord. Help me finish this message, Father. You appointed me to speak this message today, Lord. Help me finish it, Lord, without disruptions and side shows, my Father even for the glory and honor of your name. So at that very moment, the Holy Spirit, remember what promised to help us, so the Holy Spirit comes down at that very moment, and I say the sinner's prayer. I've never been to a Protestant church. I've not watched any Protestant thing. Of course, since that time, I'm like, I don't protest nothing. I'm just a believer. We are Christians. And um, the Holy Spirit comes and helps me. In water, I shall not be moved. Every time we preach a powerful message, the enemy tries to attack. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Amen. Fighting sin and Satan, I shall not be moved. Like a tree planted by the water, I shall not be moved. Hallelujah. Please just stay with us and keep rebuking. If the enemy tries to disrupt, don't move away. That's what he would want you to do, to give up, to quit, because you're used to a smooth flow and everything. But we must through many trials enter the kingdom of God. And when we're hungry for God, we continue to pursue until we are fed, until we are nurtured. So the Holy Spirit, as I was saying, came and helped me at that very moment as a new covenant was evoked even before I said the sinner's prayer because in my heart I had moved from my hallelujah 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 there's power in praise there's power in praise you know the enemy thinks he's disrupting us but what he's doing is actually we are going through a coaching and mentoring session of how to overcome the enemy <laughs> amen so, um, you know, just basically oh, I'm talking about covenant and about the Abrahamic covenant as well as my covenant and the fact that, um, you know, thank you, Noni. Thank you. Thank you for interceding. Thank you, guys. So the moment that you make a decision to honor the Lord, even before you do it, the fact that you have made a decision, a covenant at that very moment comes through and speaks. Um, and if you don't make a covenant, something else will covenant with you, and that is the power of darkness. And before I finish, I just want to mention, um, and we will continue again tomorrow as the Lord allows us to continue, Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 60. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 60. Nevertheless, I will remember my covenant with you in the days of your youth, and I will establish an everlasting covenant with you. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 60. Nevertheless, I will remember, this is the Lord who is speaking, my covenant with you in the days of your youth, and I will establish an everlasting covenant with you. God remembers covenant. God remembers covenant. So much so that in Matthew 5, chapter 5, verse 37, he tells us, let your yes be a yes. 
Let your no be a no. Don't enter into careless covenants. And uh, we will be looking at people who have died as a result of covenant also in the Bible. And um, covenant speak. Covenant speak. And when Satan goes to accuse, he uses covenant to accuse. Um, then again in verse uh, Psalm, Psalm chapter 106 verse 45. Uh, Psalm chapter 106 verse 45. And God remembered his covenant for their sake. And he relented. Relenting means to hold back. And he relented according to the greatness of his loving kindness. And God remembered his covenant for their sake. Not his sake. For their sake. And he relented of the action he was going to of destruction. And according to the greatness of his loving kindness. God is a covenant God. Now, I posted earlier... A photograph of a nice looking plant, isn't it? It must have looked beautiful. Uh, for those of you that, that don't know, uh, that's actually not a beautiful plant. Um, it's not a beautiful tree. It's actually a phenomenon that I noted when uh, we were in Nyanza, we were in Dala, I married in Rusinga. And uh, it's actually a weed that has come. It's such a beautiful weed. It's nice and yellow and looks glorious. But what it does is that it comes and it covers a tree and it sucks the life out of that tree. And then if the wind comes or if you tear it off and you throw it off, it plants itself to the next tree. And what it's doing is that it's just uh, a parasite that is feeding on trees. And it really grieved my heart because we were just crossing uh, Lake Victoria. Um, and as we were crossing Lake Victoria, we, we looked and, uh, you know, somebody commented and said, Yani has in Thilisha. They didn't know about the way we had been in Kisumu and prayed um, in Kisumu. And for those of you that have missed the video, we'll try to upload it and then you can counter check against the time. But um, when Kisumu, and one of the things the Lord caused me to do is to declare and to decree a death to the highest wind, weed, sorry, and to declare that the, it's been destroyed and the Lord led me to pray mercy and of course covenant and all that. So I'll take you through that kind of teaching so that you can be able to practice it in your own personal life and wherever you are for intercession. And, um, you know, like two days later, uh, there was a, there was somebody forwarded me uh, a clip, I think from Standard newspaper that was saying that fishermen walk up literally the next day after the prayer that I prayed of course they didn't connect it to the prayer and I'm not saying it's me it's the glory of God and the Holy Spirit and his goodness and his mercy that he uses an ordinary human being a sinner saved by grace um, but literally um, the next morning the fishermen woke up uh, to finding that Hassan had just supernaturally disappeared of course a few weeks later people were saying that it was a certain Mrogi Mchawi who was doing it but what hurt me was seeing now this thing that is now killing trees because you know, trees um, help with rain and everything. And, you know, our home is pretty, pretty dry. And, you know, we've been praying and it's a sitting and drought is always, and dryness is always a sign of sin. Every single time, broken covenant, the Lord withholds rain um, or every single time. Uh, just this is from Chronicles. If, if, but if I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, okay? If I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain. I know we like to quote uh, 7 verse 14, verse, verse 13 talks about if I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain. Then it says if by people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. If somebody could just post that here for us so that somebody who's following and maybe doesn't understand scripture can quickly move into that. Yeah, but it begins by saying, if I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, then it says, if my people who are called by my name. So this is about covenant. And if you see drought and everything. So this weed has now come and it's choking the trees. So, you know, it's like there's this thing that's chasing um, the people of Nyanza. And really it's about broken covenants. And this year I will be giving quite a bit of my time back home. Um, to walk with the people, to teach and really uh, tap into what uh, people like Joe Kyle had done uh, in the 50s and the 60s and that revival. And uh, I'm hoping that probably we can reconnect with Joe Kyle and, you know, him being the older and me being a younger priest, that we may be able to go back and revisit the covenants of the 50s and the 60s because revival was heavily, it heavily started in Nyanza, but it was stolen along the way, unfortunately. And this is the year. This is the year. I know God's going to do it and we bless the lord and give him glory amen i'm gonna end the broadcast there and i uh, want to see if there are any prayer requests because obviously we like to pray for people um amen brenda thank you i see you are really praying thank you so much um and i'm still remembering our prayer requests uh, brenda and interceding and i'm getting quite a bit of breakthrough okay uh inbox me a little later honey i was actually supposed to inbox you yesterday and i forgot um, 
all right so it's just quite a bit of prayer for the network you guys were just paying attention on the network so we'll continue with teaching about covenant tomorrow but basically if you don't walk with the covenant of God, you walk with the covenant of the enemy, just like with that weed um, that is trying to choke people and with the hyacinth that was trying to choke the fish and the, and the, and the, and the, and the, the, to stop the air from getting into the sea, the, the lake so that, you know, the fish die and it was succeeding, but God broke it. But in the same way, if you don't walk in covenant, um, the enemy will not, you know, there's no demilitary zone. There's no demilitary zone. There's no, no man's land. You know, when you're going between two countries, there's a no man's land. And when I was younger, I was very cheeky, and uh, I remember crossing over to Tanzania and, and dancing and saying, you mean if I do anything here, nobody can do anything to me? But of course, there's no no man's land in the spiritual realm. You know, I was young and foolish at the time. And in the spiritual realm, there are two ways. You're either walking in darkness or you're walking in light. There are no two ways about it. Either darkness or light. No two ways about it. Yeah, so um, if you're not walking with God, if you're not a believer and you don't give your life to Christ, then you, you are actually walking under the covenant of Satan and you are that tree with the weed that has covered it. It's looking beautiful on the outside and everything looks fine, but life is being choked out of you without even you realizing it. And my prayer is that you would give your life to Christ before it's too late and the enemy takes you back, uh, takes you into hell because hell was made for Satan and the demons, not for any human beings. All right. As we wind up, prayer request, uh, Esther Wangwe says, my daughter is going to school at noon. Um, and she says hi and bye. Oh, okay. And pray for her in her journey uh, to form two. I will say a prayer for her. Uh, all right. Okay. I feel the Holy Spirit release already on her, uh, Esther. It's going to be a thing. Oh, there we go. It's going to be a prophesying. It's going to be a phenomenal time for your daughter. Just ask her to join um, CU and the Lord is going to do great and wondrous things to her. And I feel the Holy Spirit really reconfirming this right now as I say this. She's a really special girl and God's, God's, it's not going to be the same as the last term. Um, she's going to really, really have a divine uh, encounter with God. She's going to know God in a special way. Please tell her that I love her and I'm praying for her. I speak a blessing upon her in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and King and I thank God for her. She's a sozo light. She's a sozo light that is going out um, into boarding school. Very, very different. We cover her with the blood of Jesus Christ together with all the other children that are going back to school. Amen. Catherine says, pray for my marriage. Catherine, if you're in Nairobi, I would like to ask you to join the Covenant of Marriage group and uh, join the next class uh, that is starting around about June so we can be able to work with you as well. Um, and we will. We are praying right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus for Catherine's marriage. Oh, Father God, marriage is your idea, my Father, my King. So secure that marriage, oh, Father God. Step into it, oh, Lord Jehovah, and redeem it in the name of Jesus Christ. It shall not break in the name of Jesus. Any person has entered any that, that covenant in the name of Jesus Christ or any Anything that has entered that covenant, we proclaim his death in the name of Jesus, for she proclaimed till death do us part, even in Jesus' mighty name. And we are praying for the children going to school. Amen. Please don't call them kids. Let me just share something with you about kids very quickly that I learned uh, very recently, actually. I learned that, um, you know, kids, kids means baby goat. Huh? Don't worry. I didn't even know it myself. This is a revelation that God gave me. So kids means baby goat. And then, um, if you will remind me, I'll talk about uh, Baphomet. But Baphomet is the Illuminati god. Illuminati god, that's who they worship, Baphomet. But Baphomet takes on the shape of the, uh, a, goat's, a goat's head, a ram's head. Okay? A ram's head. So when we call children kids, it's like we're saying children of the goat. And basically, Baphomet takes glory for that. It's really spooky. It's really weird. Uh, but yeah, God has completely forbidden me um, from uh, calling uh, children kids. Uh, so call them children. Once in a while it comes up, you know, because of habit. Uh, but just to mention, it's children, okay? Um, hopefully that helps somebody as well. Steve Ajuang says, my dad is sick. Oh, Father God, wouldn't you just send your word right now and touch Steve's father. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, let there be healing, my Father, my God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and King. Oh, Lord Jehovah, visit him right now. Visit that old man right now, my Father. Steve loves you so much, Lord, and has been sending me so much encouragement, Lord. Encourage him right now, my Father, my King. Encourage him, Lord. I join with him in faith as we pray, even in the name of Jesus. Steve, I'll continue to pray. I've not quite gotten a breakthrough right now, but um, I'll continue to pray. And please remind me later so that we can share. Okay? All right. Um, 
then some in Dura. Uh, my first live broadcast. Thanks. Okay, I want to tap into the blessing and anointing. Amen. Karibu sami. Karibu sana. We are praying for men to rise and to come so that we may raise up uh, great men of God. Amen. So, Kwambuka, trusting God for business idea. Oh, my father, in the name of Jesus, let's speak in partition. Even as I've been up since 1 a.m., just um, fellowshipping with you, my father, and I kept asking you not to interrupt me with business ideas because they kept overflowing, Father, as has been happening every time I pray. Won't you do it for your child, Lord, who's asking, my father, my God? Do it for her, Father God. Um, Kwambuka, I'll just encourage you, have a close relationship with God, pray and seek his face. If you're born again, get to know him deeper and love him. There's a level you get with loving God and cherishing him, that the spirit of God becomes a spirit of profit. And uh, for me, I just kept telling God, God, stop, I want to just worship you for a minute. I don't want to hear business ideas right now. I want to worship you for a minute. But he overwhelms you with very unique business ideas. So the, the secret is in worship. The secret is in worship and loving God. Um, so Dokas Karanja, uh, pray with us that our battles will not be in vain. Uh, pray for Swaziland and Guinea-Bissau countries that are being ruled by powers of darkness. Okay, I've been praying for Swaziland, but I've never had day prayed for Guinea-Bissau. Thanks for bringing it into our radar, Dorcas. We are a um, ministry that um, has been commissioned into, um, you know, praying for governments and praying for nations. So thank you for that. Uh, the moment we're really praying for Bangkok as well, uh, Thailand as well, uh, which we are really feeling very heavily, and of course North Korea very, very heavily as well in China. So uh, we will add on, and there's Uganda as well, there's Tanzania that we're feeling led to pray for. We're still praying a lot for Zimbabwe, Zambia, um, those are the nations, Ethiopia, that the Lord has put very heavily on my heart, uh, America, of course, every single day, um, South Africa quite a bit, uh, but Guinea-Bissau for some reason I've never prayed about, but the interesting thing is that this morning I prayed and I said, Lord, raise up partners across the countries that will tell us what's going on in the nation so that we may be able to pray. So thank you, Dokas. You come in answer to that. We will be praying more for Swaziland and Guinea-Bissau. Amen. And then Susan Gillian says, please pray. I need a salary increase at my place of work. Hallelujah, Susan. We speak a release of your blessing in the name of Jesus Christ as you are faithful. This is the year the Lord has said it. Uh, I speak the tithe blessing in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and King. And I declare if you are giving to the Benevolent Fund, uh, I can't quite remember if you're one of them, uh, but remember that giving to God, uh, to the poor, is lending to, to God. So remember also there's that aspect of uh, believing the Lord. So I believe that the Lord will do it for you, Susan Gillian. You have really, really faithfully followed and worked with us under the online ministry. And I think you're one of our partners as far as I remember. And I know that God is releasing a heavy blessing, uh, even as much more is required this year to be able to receive more so that we can be able to do more for the kingdom. So receive that even for a faithful tither. Uh, Shell Myth says, um, Pastor Kathy teach extensively on spiritual husbands and wives. Okay, I'll do that. I have been a victim and it's hell. Okay, I'll do that, honey. I'll do that. I'll do more of that. One of my gadgets is really buzzing. Okay, must be a prayer alarm. Jeb Korea, pray for Jeremy and Tiara. They are traveling tonight with their daddy. Oh, my father, God. You know, sorry, guys. It's not it's not favoritism, but, you know, there are those children in the fellowship. But so, so, so when I see something, I'm like, oh, yeah. So, Father God, I thank you for Tiara. I thank you for Jeremy, my father, my king. Oh, Lord, God, as they travel, Lord, cover them with the blood of Jesus Christ, oh, God. My Father, thank you, Lord Jehovah God, for the Psalm 91 blessings, oh, God, Jehovah, that are upon these baby souls, oh, children, oh, Lord Jehovah God. Thank you, King of Glory. So, Jeb Corey will be praying a bit more. Honey, I'm in Westlands. Let's meet up, eh? Let's meet up and pray. I've really missed you. And, you know, now I'm free, I'm available, and I'd really love to meet up and pray with you, honey. So, let's meet up and pray, Okay. Let's do that tomorrow, Jeb Korea, if we, can, if we can, okay? And if you're available anytime now, I'm leaving the office at 3 o'clock. I have a 1 to 2, uh, but I would like if you could come over, that would be fantastic. If need be, I can come over. Just let me know. Text me so that as I finish the broadcast, I also remember then we can meet up. I love you, honey. I love you. Masi uh, Njoki, pray for my sister that God may restore her health. Father God, in the name of Jesus, every person that's unwell, visit them, O Lord Jehovah God. Oh, Father, King of glory, let your healing fall upon them even now in the name of Jesus Christ. Yandi katere bozaya rekama soto rubozi di bazandi. 
in the kotoro mosaya uh must you have just seen a vision if you could uh sidebar me just send me a message on 0799190010 0799190010 uh, I need to ask you something. I've just seen a vision. I need to ask you something so that we can um, do a spiritual investigation on it and pray further. Uh, Duolo, amen. Powerful. I love you, honey. I've missed you. I've missed you. Ebu, you call me, okay? Then that's one of our daughters of Elohim. Uh, Monique Mwangi, and of course, Tuesday Fellowship. Monique Mwangi, Ezekiel 16. Okay, so you're just uh, commenting on that. Esa Wangwe says, pray that I get knob for the oven. I told you it's not working too well. Okay, God give a knob for that oven. Okay, all right, Lord. Um, Penny says, my son's name is Nate Matthew Ngahu. Penny, I know your son. <laughs> I know your son, honey, and God spoke powerfully upon him, and it still stands. It still stands. That was a covenant, honey. Just remind the Lord and speak of it even as he goes to school, okay? Yeah, so the Lord spoke very strongly about your son. He's special and God's going to use him. So just remember that. Um, all right, that Basi Duolo, my daughter told us the other day that they are not kids here yeah, since kids are young of goats. Yes, but then now there's a connection to Baphomet. You know, the enemy uses that every single time. Uh, Kibundui says, thanks for enlightening us. I didn't know. Okay, yeah, yeah. Even me, by the way, God revealed it to me. I mean, I've been born again for so many years by the time the Lord revealed it to me. I think I learned about it last year or the year before. Then God used a lady in Australia who sent a message on the same, same thing. And uh, she's a Kenyan lady in Australia who I love so deeply. And she's very deep in the things of God. So the moment she spoke, I said, you know what? This is not my imagination. This is confirmation. So let's just stay away from calling them kids. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, I'm just saying evangelist. I have to pray for this evangelist. Because just when I'm calling out her name, uh, and I can't find her. Oh, evangelist, I didn't see your other name, but you are saying that it's your first. There you go, evangelist Rosemary. Amen. Evangelist, I speak a blessing upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. May the anointing of the Lord fall upon you heavily. Even as the enemy was trying to disrupt as I was calling out your name, I speak the blessing of the Lord and an increase in your ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's journey together. Let's find out how we can work together as well. I would love to get to know you, Father. And may you experience revival fire even as you go out ministering the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Karibu sana. And thank you for commenting. A lot of uh, uh, leaders are not commenting because they don't want someone to see them and you know quite a bit of pride issues unfortunately in the kingdom of god and yet we are one family so god bless you and thank you also even for joining the live broadcast may the lord minister to your ministry in a powerful manner i'm looking forward to your testimony i hear the holy spirit saying you will give me a testimony hallelujah uh charles wambugu says pray for my wife who will be traveling to join me here in dubai wonderful god bless you guys wonderful oh father thank you for this couple that loves you no god as they join uh together in Dubai, Lord, give them a, a wonderful church to, to, to be able to behold, oh God, and just do good unto them, oh Lord Jehovah God. Wonderful couple. God bless you. God bless you so much. And may your union be truly blessed. And may you see the abundance of the Lord and enjoy one another. Amen. Shalom. Shalom. Wonderful. I love that. I love marriage ministry. Katrina Kenda says, pray for my breakthrough. Honey, I was up praying for you this morning. I was actually up praying for you this morning. One of the people that was really interceding for at 1 a.m. this morning, all the way to, oh gosh, I've not really slept, by the way. I hope my eyes are not showing it. But um, yeah, from from 1 all the way to morning, I was just interceding. You are very heavily on my heart, Kathy. You are very heavy on my heart. Um, Medicine Modoni says, pray for my nephew, Joseph. His skin has tormented him. My father, Lord. I minister healing onto that skin in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, my Father, thank you, Lord. Balm of Gilead, be thou applied upon this little one's skin, my God. We refuse torment in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, it's interesting, medicine, that I use the word torment, okay? So just go and read Matthew 18, uh, from verse 21 to 35, about the issue of torment. I don't know if you've attended a social session, but we teach a lot about torment. And right there you have spoken about the solution. So if you can sidebar me as well, I'll be willing to have a discussion with you on it. But if you can attend the social session, the next social session, if you have it already, if you have, check your notes on the issue of torment, okay? Um, it stems from unforgiveness. Normally, because this is a, I don't know how this, this uh, child is, 
but normally it's un uh, to to uh, torment is the right word, by the way, uh, because if you're having th skin issues, normally that's a torment issue, okay? So sidebar me, I'll discuss that with you a bit further. So the solution is in forgiveness, okay? If the baby is too young, normally the forgiveness is normally the parents, okay? So I'll take you through that as well. Uh, okay, Caroline, praying for families to be born again. Hallelujah. Amen. Lord God, may you release... Um, uh, may you release, oh God, salvation to this family and to our families, Lord God, even as we continue to pray, even in the name of Jesus. Guys, I have to go now. Um, Barbara, addiction to drugs? You need to call me. We need to have a one-on-one -on -one if you're in Kenya, okay? But the fact that you have said that um, means there's repentance there, Barbara. I, and I'm going to just stop and... Uh, Monique, thank you also for quoting uh, the scripture about uh, shutting up the heavens. But Barbara, I'm going to just stop and pray for you. I was going to shut down and then I've just seen that. So this will be the last prayer. And then the rest I will continue to pray even as we go offline, okay? We're going to move this broadcast into YouTube and we don't want it to be too long. Yeah, but let me just pray with Barbara. Barbara, I don't know if you're born again, honey, but I would like to call you. I would like to call you. Would you inbox me and give me your digits so that I can call you um, and let me know so that I can pray with you about that addiction? Um, but Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Lord. She's been watching, actually. I've been seeing her watching, Lord. Thank you for bringing her in, Father, and for the humility of being able to say that she's struggling, oh God. Father, as I plan to journey with her, as I plan to reach out to her, oh God, I thank you because, Lord, it's you. It's you, I'm just a vessel. So Lord, through the power of the Holy Spirit, go to her right now, Lord, I ask. Oh King, mighty God. Visit her, my Father, and release her from this bondage, Lord, and from this attack of demons, my Father, that enslave, even in the name of Jesus Christ, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name. Barbara, I would like you to watch our broadcast. That's called, oh God, I don't remember. How demons work. I felt your struggle. Inbox me, honey. I'll pray with you. I'll call you and we'll pray together. And I'll just uh, walk with you. Amen. Amen. Guys, saints of God, help me pray for Barbara Koran, okay? Help me pray for her, even as she's um, asked for prayer. All right, so guys, what I'll do is I will pray for each and every one of you. I will go item by item. I pray for every uh, prayer item that comes up. Uh, you can also send me a message to 0799-0799-190010. It's also the same line to use uh, for any giving that the Lord puts in your heart to give. And of course, when the Lord comes through for you with a miracle, normally you're en encouraged to go back to the house of the Lord and give a thanksgiving offering. It's a good practice to have. It's a godly practice to have. Amen. Amen, guys. I'll continue to pray. So just continue to just um, inbox. Uh, Ken, there is a message there yesterday, in yesterday's broadcast, and a release that was given for people who are looking for a job, okay? So just uh, go right in there. I'm really, really longing to go through your messages live right now, but because of the timelines, and I do have an appointment coming up, and I want to pray before the appointment comes up, I'll need to sign off and then continue, but I do promise I will take each one of you and each prayer request before the Lord in prayer even in Jesus' name. And for all of you, like our page. Uh, also, uh, go to YouTube. I'll be moving quite a bit into YouTube. Uh, Apostle Kathy Kageni Uganga, Kathy with a K, that is my YouTube channel. I'll be doing quite a bit of live broadcasts, um, uh, short, short teachings. And, um, okay, uh, so some of them may not be on this page. So please go to our YouTube channel. Apostle Kathy Kageni Uganga will be moving more and more videos uh, into that place. I'll be preaching more on YouTube than I'm doing here. 
Um, so please go and like the page. Um, Mudoni, the, the number is 07, so plus 254 if you're international, Kenya code, plus 254 uh, 799 plus 254-799-190010. Some of you have been preferring to do MoneyGram. If you do MoneyGram, my full name is Catherine, okay? <laughs> Good old Catherine, C-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-E. -E. The rest is as per uh, my documents, okay? Kageni Uganga. Uh, as per my documents, but if you send Kathy, it might be tricky. I actually have to go and resolve one one such giving um, uh, that has Kathy. So I'll find out whether they do accept Kathy. Yeah, but God bless you. Thank you so much for giving to the house of the Lord. It really encourages me, but also we are able to plan and to do that which the Lord has called us to do without having to worry about money and provision. So God bless you. And indeed, I assure you, uh, as you give it to Sozo Church, um, the Lord, it's a, it's a fertile ground that I've seen people really testify of God's goodness and God doing wondrous things in their lives. So don't give so that you can be blessed. That's normally not a good intention for giving. But if you are currently not giving or you're currently wondering about where to give, you're very welcome to give to the house of the Lord here at Sozo Church. God bless you. And as the Lord does uh, things for you financially, please let us know uh, so that we can also be able to share and let you know. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. So Ken, just you can inbox me, okay? Yeah. Uh, you can inbox me, Ken. Ken Bugwa. You can inbox me. then. But also revisit the... Uh, preaching yesterday, yesterday evening, okay, because there was a particular release there for jobs, okay, an anointing right there. Amen. So as I've promised, I will get, get online and pray for each one of you and mention you each by name. As the Lord does it, please let me know. It's very encouraging to know that the Lord is moving and that the Lord is working. And uh, please remember to give thanks to the Lord because only he can do it, not a human being. He is faithful and he's worthy. Thank you, Monique, for posting it. Thank you, darling. God bless you so much. And thank you for partnering with us, Monique. You've been so supportive and so encouraging in all ways. Thank you. I feel your love. God bless you so much. Amen. Thanks, guys, for watching. Please share the video. Please like our page. And please let somebody know. Don't, don't just be blessed by yourself, okay? Don't have spiritual obesity. We, we share and the Lord increases us even as we share because that is giving as well. Thanks for watching. And you know what? I'm so excited. I did a broadcast during working hours. Hallelujah. Do you know how many times I had to hold myself back as the Holy Spirit was moving? And I had to be at work and faithful and I can't do a live broadcast because, you know, it's not the right thing to do. Amen. God bless you guys. I'm really loving full-time ministry. Amen. God bless you. I, and by the way, I'm loving praying for you. I was just weeping to the Lord. Uh, you know, all, all pretty much most of the morning, just calling on the name of the Lord after about six o'clock, you know, then ministering to my husband thereafter. It's his birthday, and thank you for the birthday wishes. He's so excited. He's feeling so loved in his own quiet, uh, you know, background thing. Amen. And please pray for him as well. Um, it's not easy uh, being my husband, you know, the prophet's husband and the apostle's husband. It's not easy at all. And he has a lot of sacrifice so that, you know, he shares you, me with you guys um, so that I can be able to pray for you, stand with you, uh, pray with you and all that. God bless you. I love you guys. I really have to run now. One of my pastors is calling me. Hi, pastor. <laughs>